Have you ever whipped up an absolutely decadent body butter only to find that it transformed into a crumbly hard brick overnight? Or perhaps you were whipping up a beautiful bowl of gorgeous butters and oils and everything is going great and then suddenly it just collapses into a soft gloppy mess? Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. Whipped body butters are absolutely decadent, but they can also be a bit finicky. Today we are looking at the most common reasons why your body butters aren't whipping or why they're not staying all lovely and soft and whippy and how to fix it. Let's get into it. We'll begin with a quick definition of whipped body butter. For the purposes of this video, a whipped body butter is an anhydrous moisturizer made of oils and butters that has been whipped up to incorporate a bunch of air to create a beautiful moisturizing experience that is light and fluffy. How do you know your body butter isn't whipping? Or how do you know that the problem that you're having with your body butter is a whipping problem? There are two main categories of, hey, that's not what I wanted when it comes to a whipped body butter that's, you know, not behaving. The first one is really obvious. You'll be in there with your beaters whipping away and it's just, it won't whip up. The mixture is just pooling at the bottom of the bowl instead of getting all lovely and fluffy and gorgeous. The second whippy flop takes a few hours, sometimes a few days to set in, which is where you've whipped it up and it is gorgeous and glossy and beautiful and you put it in a jar and you're so in love and then you come back to use it uh, after some time has passed and find that it's gotten really hard and quite crumbly on you and it has, you know, it still looks whipped but when you touch it, Boo. Those are the ways that you'll know that your body butter isn't whipping and that whipping is the issue. Now there are quite a few different reasons that a body butter can do one or the other, so let's look at those reasons. These reasons can be broadly separated into formulation reasons and manufacturing making technique reasons. Reason number one your body butter isn't whipping is that the fat blend is too soft so you can't actually whip air into it because it doesn't have enough structure to support that air. In order to be whippable your fat blend needs to be a soft solid at room temperature. If your body butter just liquefies into the bottom of the bowl as soon as you start whipping it it's just kind of like sloshing around then what you need to do is adjust the fat blend. You need to increase the percentage of solid ingredients so something like shea butter or mango butter and you need to decrease the percentage of liquid ingredients. What is too soft is very very dependent on ambient temperature so you may encounter this particular challenge with whipped body butters if you are following a formulation developed by somebody who lives somewhere colder than where you live. If you'd like to learn more about melting body butters I did an entire in-depth video and blog post all about it back in 2021 so please check those out. I'll link to it in the partner blog post. Reason number two your body butter isn't whipping is the opposite of reason number one and that is your fat blend is too hard. This is generally the problem if your body butter becomes really crumbly and hard when left to sit. I have found that you can whip up almost any blend of solid butters if it's solid enough to you know not do problem number one. The challenge is if it stays nice and soft and scoopable or if it kind of seizes up when left to its own devices. Just as with the idea of too soft, too hard is a very ambient temperature dependent thing. So what is too hard for me might be just right for you if you live somewhere warmer than I do. Now within the category of too hard there are kind of two subcategories. Category number one is just too high of a concentration of solid ingredients and category number two is the wrong kind of solid ingredients and it can also be a blend of both. In order for whipped body butters to be soft they need to contain quite a lot of soft squishy at room temperature butters. So butters like shea butter, mango butter, marumaru butter, and kupuatsu butter. That soft butter or blend of soft butters is then softened just enough with some liquid oils. That sweet point we're looking for is for the fat blend to be firm enough that it can be whipped, but also soft enough that it doesn't seize up when left for an extended period of time. If the solid butters in your formulation haven't been softened up enough, and this is very dependent on ambient temperature, then after you whip the mixture, it will get kind of hard and crumbly on you. If this happens, you will need to shift the fat balance of your formulation to include less of the soft butters and more liquid oils. If your fat blend contains a high concentration of ingredients that are brittle at room temperature, ingredients like cocoa butter or waxes, that can also contribute to a body butter that gets 
dry and crumbly and hard when left to sit. Brittle hard ingredients are brittle. They're not soft and squishy. And if there are enough of them in your formulation, they will make your entire formulation behave kind of brittly. It is definitely possible to make whipped body butters that contain brittle ingredients, but you have to be quite careful to keep the amount slow and test to make sure that, you know, you can have them in there, but you can still whip and keep things nice and soft. Check out my chocolate cherry whipped body butter for an example. Reason number three your body butter isn't whipping is because the fat mixture is warming up too much as you whip it. The friction of whipping a body butter does warm it up a bit. This is why it's possible to whip a fat blend that's a little bit too hard and have it seem absolutely perfect. And then when left at room temperature, cools down a bit, seizes up, suddenly not so perfect anymore. This is also why your body butter whipping might be going just brilliantly. You've got gorgeous glossy peaks forming. It's just about perfect. And then suddenly it just kind of collapses into just soft, sloppy liquid at the bottom of your bowl. And like, what the heck? This friction and heat is why most whipped body butter projects include some sort of cooling in the whipping process. From what I've seen, the most common type of cooling is the freeze whip freeze cycle, where you melt the butters together, pop the bowl in the freezer for a predetermined amount of time, pull it out, whip it for a predetermined amount of time, and then it's freezer whip, freezer whip, freezer whip until you have a thoroughly whipped body butter that didn't have a chance to melt on you through all that whipping. The longer you whip a body butter for, the more the whipping is going to warm the body butter up. And also, the larger a batch of body butter is, the more whipping time it's going to require. This can mean that a process that worked beautifully on a 30, 40, 50 gram batch of body butter just completely fails to produce results when you scale up the formulation, but don't change the manufacturing method. I have found that 30 to 50 gram batches of body butter often whip up just beautifully with just one stop in the freezer. There's not a lot of product there, so it doesn't need a ton of whipping time. And the coldness of the bowl is enough to offset the warming of the whipping for the length of time of whipping that is required for a batch size that small. However, if you take that 50 gram batch and you scale it up to a 500 gram batch and you try the same thing, the coolness of the bowl isn't gonna cut it for keeping the batch cold enough for the amount of whipping time that's required. So you need to introduce some more cooling either through you know, some more stops in the freezer or you can try popping your whipping bowl in an ice bath and then doing all your whipping with the whipping bowl in an ice bath. I wrote quite a lot more about this in the blog post for my Autumn Spice Whipped Body Butter. So that's linked in the partner blog post. I highly recommend giving it a read. And then reason number four, your body butter isn't whipping is because you are hot processing a formulation that was designed to be cold processed or vice versa. To make a cold processed whipped body butter, you don't actually melt anything together. You just start with a beautiful, silky smooth butter and then whip in your liquid oils. I have learned through experience that you can get dramatically different firmnesses of fat blends by melting some oils and butters together versus whipping them together. So if a formulation was designed to be cold processed and you hot process it, you can end up with a quite noticeably different firmness level to the finished fat blend. And then that different firmness level is definitely going to translate to different results after you whip it all up. Cold processing a formulation that was designed to be hot processed or vice versa isn't a guaranteed flop, but if you have done that, and the thing that you have made is nothing like what you were expecting, there's a pretty good chance that that is the reason why. So with all that said, how can you fix your body butters so that they whip up beautifully? My first tip is to make sure that your formulation is mostly butters that are soft at room temperature. Your fat blend needs to be soft at room temperature in order to whip up and stay soft. So if your formulation contains quite a lot of brittle ingredients like Takuma butter or cocoa butter, try reducing the concentrations of those ingredients if your body butter isn't whipping up and replace them with soft solids like shea butter or mango butter. Tip number two is adjust the balance between the soft solids and the liquids in the formulation. If you're finding your body butter is too soft to whip up or to stay whipped, you're going to want to use more of the soft solids and less liquids. And if you're finding that your body butter is too hard or too firm or crumbly after it has had a chance to sit at room temperature, you're going to want to do the opposite decrease the percentage of soft butters and increase the percentage of oils. My fourth tip is to just give it time. If you aren't sure about a formulation, 
give it a bit of time. Whip it up and wait and see what happens. I never declare a whipped body butter formulation done until it has proved to me that it will stay soft and scoopable at room temperature for days on end. As part of your formulation process, it can be very helpful to whip up different ratios between soft butters and liquid oils, and then you can sort of set them beside each other and watch them as the days pass so that you can get a feel for, you know, what 60, 40, 50, 50, 40, 60, et cetera does. And lastly, try experimenting with different manufacturing methods that incorporate cooling. So if you're finding your body butter is getting too soft as you whip it, try breaking up your whipping with stops in the freezer or try whipping with the bowl that contains your whipped body butter in an ice bath. I also like to finish up by doing one final quick whip of my body butters at room temperature, since that's the temperature that they'll be living at. And as a final pointer on whipped body butters, make sure that you baby them during storage. Don't let them get too hot or they will melt and when they re-solidify, they definitely won't be whipped anymore. All right, and that has been it for why your body butter isn't whipping. If you would like to know why your body butter is greasy, click here. And if you'd like to know why your body butter is melting, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.